Welcome to my today's uh, sketching video. I'm painting Falcon in my sketchbook and I will walk you through the whole process. First, gather all your supplies, pencil, canes, water, jar, paper towel, brushes, and, and sketchbook. So using my pencil, you could use any pencil I would recommend to be. I just grabbed whatever pencil I had uh, in hand. Um, and I started drawing, sketching basic shapes of falcon. You can see I'm just putting, laying down some basic shapes. And don't worry, like I, I, if I don't like my sketch, I can use this putty rubber. It is the mediable areas I really like. You can just lift uh, without ruining paper. So I'm right now using that because I wasn't happy with uh, where I was going with my sketch. I'm just looking at my reference picture and laying down the pencil drawing. If you would like to uh, paint this falcon with me, I will attach the picture reference as well as I will attach line drawing for you so that you can trace it and have fun painting. So as you can see, I'm carefully laying down the socket of eye because I would like to keep the eye a bit realistic. I'm going to play around with the brush mark for feathers and other parts of the falcon's body. But for eye, I would like to keep with that soul in the eye. That's why I try to put the shape very accurate for the eye and rest for the feathers and all the tiny 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 feathers i'm trying to just suggest the marking in the drawing you could do the same because we will play with the uh, with our watercolor
we are finally done with our drawing let's get printing okay but before that i'll show you this brush that i'm gonna use i'm gonna use this brush that i ordered recently from amazon it's a sable brush it says, says natural sable brush um natural hair so i i ordered them and i'm gonna try today for the first time so let's start with our initial first let's start with our first wash don't forget to keep your paper towel handy and closer to your water jars i'm making myself comfortable by laying everything that i can reach easily and uh, i have some paints already in the palette but i'm going to use um, some of the paint that i'll show you along the way i have some scarlet red that i will use uh, i will use cadmium yellow hue that i already have on the palette uh, to mix some yellows orangey red and browns uh, i'll mix scarlet lake cadmium yellow hue and a little bit of paint spray so here i'm mixing paint spray because our first wash will be of uh, paint spray As you can see, I'm doing very light layer. I'm mixing lots of water at this stage because it's an initial wash stage. And I just want to be sure before I start putting more layers. And it's really nice to be loose in the first layer. So I'm trying to like put very transparent layer and suggest some feathers from the beginning, leaving some gaps uh, in the bird's body to give the breathing space and lights wherever i see lights in the picture i'm trying to leave that area a bit lighter by not like completely doing a flat wash over the whole body i'm leaving some gaps in the body as you can see I usually use uh, like to use three jars of water i am inspired by hazel zones because she uh, used three jars of water and I, I think it makes sense because water gets really dirty and um, last jar i will try to keep it less dirty because it helps us to lay um, keep our paints clean so here i'm mixing making like a brown so i use kunakrudan gold um paints gray a little bit to make it a bit darker and laying down my um brown wash to because in, in the reference picture falcon's body is kind of a golden brown so i wanted to show that glow so i'm laying down initial layer with kunakrudan gold Now I'm using this red. You could use any mix of red. Um, on my palette, it's Scarlet, uh, Scarlet Lake. I'm mixing Scarlet Lake and Kinokuran uh, Gold together to make a little bit of dark red. It's not like pure red. You can see it looks like a bit of brown. And I added paints gray into this mix, making it more darker. And you can see I'm adding dark uh, markings for the feather on the person's body using the same mix of dark brown that I make. 
and I'm not like laying very opaque. I'm still like using like mix of water. The consistency of paint is still very loose with water. But because I'm laying down uh, about another paint and I'm adding more paints gray, it looks darker. And you can see I am just putting down some marks of suggesting there is a feather. There are feathers under at the neck area and the body. Adding more layer of paints gray, pure paints gray with water diluted with lots of water around the eye area. As you can see, I keep going and keep adding a transparent layer, um, covering the areas where I see from the reference picture. I'm still keeping it loose and transparent at this stage. And with that, our first layer of wash is done. So I'm squeezing lemon yellow on the palette because I can see there is a cool yellow, like greenish yellow shade on the Balkan's head area and the beak. So I'm gonna use for that, this lemon yellow. I'm just adding tiny bit of water to the pigment and adding that to the beak. I'm not making it too watery. You can see it's not running down, but there is like enough water so that paint can move. And I'm putting it in a beak. Now I, I made sure that I'm adding a bit mix of uh, transparent orange in the eye. I mixed it with uh, Scarlet Lake to begin with, but then I changed my mind because I wanted to put a very light first layer wash in the eye, not very orangey, uh, because then I can add more uh, later on when it dries.
you can see I'm back with Pens Gray and adding some furry details. You can see there are some hair, like very thin furs around the eye area and the neck. So I'm just suggesting using Pens Gray and a mix of uh, making mix of brown. You can see I have added a bit of uh, a viola in yellow in the mix of brown just now, and because I wanted to be lighten it up and use various shades of brown in Falcon's body. And now I'm back with Payne's Gray because I can see there is a, a bit of bit of gray in the beak area and I'm adding that making sure that I keep the point of the beak which is a bit curved. I think um, I'm liking this brush. These brushes are still good. Usually, I have seen that like, sable hair brushes are usually very expensive. I'm not sure if uh, it, it says it's a natural sable hair, but they are still better. Now I'm mixing uh, my rose madder with paints gray to make it a bit of purple, very light purple shades and putting it on the head area below the beak and the neck area. I'm just laying transparent washes here. So it's not all the layers are not completely dry. Uh, I'm just putting playing around in the wet areas and semi dry area. You see, I'm now mixing darker purple, mixing, taking more paints gray and rose madder. Mixing Scarlet Lake and Rose Madder, taking a bit of paint gray, making it kind of a reddish brown here. I'm trying to make a red brown. Then I'm adding more Scarlet Lake, Rose Madder, Madder and paint gray. So you can see I added more paint gray at the end and make it more darker. And I'm just trying to splatter. But to splatter, you need more water. So try. Uh, with more water and if, if you want like more splatters you need to put more water in the pigment i i really like putting splatters and splashes uh, because it kind of uh, i it makes the bird very fun and quirky instead of like too uh, realistic i'm trying to keep it loose so i really like this effect of uh, splatters and splashes you can see i put splatter and then i add water I keep adding more water because what I'm planning to do is a little bit of blowing. I'm going to show you a blowing technique with map. So you could just, you'll have to put more water for that so the pigment is loose. So what I'm going to do is just put more watery pigment around the area and then just blow it with my mouth. Now at this point, I keep seeing and keep adding layers. You need to add more layers to darken some of the areas. Like here around the eye, I see it's more darker. So I'm using more paints gray. You could mix brown in this area. You could mix a dark brown and add in this area. But I'm putting layers with of paints gray.
carefully painting inside the beak, uh, darkening it up because beak is big. He is big darker. See, I strengthen um, some colors in the beak area with lemon yellow. I'm trying to put kind of more detail around the eye area because I can see there are some lines around the eye area. So I'm just suggesting hint of some lines um, using dark paints, gray. I lost the light on the head, so I'm trying to lift some pigment. You can see it because that stripe on the head was is lighter in the paint in the picture. So I was trying to keep it, but because paint was too wet, it kind of run down and I lost the light. But you don't need to worry, we can use white gouache at the end to bring the light out from the where in the areas where we lost the light. You can see now I'm strengthening some areas in the bird body using mix of very darkest reddish brown. So I use Scarlet Lake paints gray and making making very dark orange like a red reddish brown color. I usually don't make swatches in the beginning. Um, I paint intuitively, um, looking colors in the picture and then whatever comes from the heart. But I, some mixes, I like some mixes. That's why here you can see in my sketchbook, I'm making swatches as I go now because some mixes I am kind of liking it. So I thought that I should just record by making swatches. And also, it makes look the spread of the sketchbook a bit nicer I, I, because the color swatches really are attractive when you do it, even just on its own. Um, so that's why it makes the spread looking more attractive as well. Remember, this is not a finished painting. We are just playing around in our sketchbook, playing around with the idea. So it's okay to put swatches around um, the painting. You could write something if you like. Now, as I go, I will keep strengthening layers by adding more darker pigments. Um, at the end, you use less water, more pigment mixes to make it darker. So you could you see that I added paint gray in the body uh, showing that there, there's some dark patches mixing scarlet lake paints gray making it brown again I am loving this reddish brown that's why I put a swatch to record this uh, mix
yeah, in the reference picture, we could see that it's more kind of a brown and raw umber color of the falcon. But like there are some colors that we can't see, but I, I like to play around with uh, adding more variations of colors in the in my paintings. Now I'm strengthening eye area. I I want to add more in the eye area. So I'm making a swatch of uh, cadmium yellow hue and scarlet lake, a bit of scarlet lake to make it like a very transparent orange. You could see that. And I'm trying to play around with that mix inside the eye. This eye, because eye is more orangey and vibrant. And there's, there's like, I love Falcon's eye. It's like really sharp looking. When you look at that, they look like very fierce when you look into their eyes because it's like orange, like bright orange color. That's what I'm trying to do here. And I will add more at the later later stage when it dries. I'm trying to just even in the eye area I'm using layers. Keep adding um, more dark and light as the layer becomes semi dry. If you would like uh, to get it completely dry, you can leave it for a bit longer and then add layers when the another one dries. So what I'm doing, I'm just like playing around in one area, let the area, area dry and then come back to it when it's semi-dry. That's what I'm doing here. I'm coming back to the body, adding more details, uh, suggesting birds and feathers. We're nearly coming to an end and I am just adding more layers and defining some of the areas with more pigment and less water. So for tiny details, I am using this very small brush and less watery mix of paint gray to put that eye wish very dark inside the eye. It's really dark. I am trying to leave that white dot in the eye. I couldn't see in the picture properly. I think it is there in the picture, a white dot, but I'm trying to keep it, uh, leave that white for that white dot in the eye, but it's, it's not. I will still add white gouache at the end. So make sure that eye is more dry before you put that black, otherwise, our paints will bloom out and your, or it will cover your orange area. So I, I made sure that it was dry and not like really wet. I'm, I'm really being careful because this paper stay wet for longer. Uh, this is a Cardi sketchbook. So it take, it, it stay wet for a bit longer. So my, in my case, the eye area is not completely dry. That's why I'm trying to be very careful to put that dark inside that circle and not come out I see falcons eye is not like a very round there is a hood on it I saw like uh, it's kind of a uh, 
semicircle. And you can see I'm putting more dark uh, details now. As we are coming to an end, I would like to add a bit of more detail at this stage. I'm not overly conscious about like the tiny, tiny details to make it like too realistic. Overall, um, I'm looking at the overall light and dark areas and then just playing around inside them. I'm not zooming my picture or anything and looking at the details closely. I am seeing whatever I see uh, from the distance where my picture is set, uh, which is on the iPad. Just giving like a hint of hair on the head. I mean feather, <laughs> like a hairy feather, thin hairy feathers. So I'll keep adding detail to strengthen the area such as beak and feathers and furs and that thin feather lines on the head in the last layer before I add highlights with white, white gouache. I'm now adding uh, details with white gouache directly from the tube and not diluting it with, with water much. That head area where we lost I the head area where I lost light, I added white there. I added that little bit of white in the eye and around the eye area. Adding more whites around the neck area to highlight some of the fur. And just to add light in that area. I see there is a bit lightness in the beak, so I am making it a bit lighter around there because only the bit of the beak is very dark and bit is light so i'm adding a bit light and i see there is a bit bluey light there so that's why i added wh white with the ultramarine blue which was on my palette and made like a powdery blue to add in the beak and a final stroke and then we'll be done so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let me know if you have any comments in the comment section i would love to hear from you and yeah share your paintings tag me on social media so i can see your paintings and i would be happy to share your paintings whatever you make your version of falcon
So happy painting guys and have a good day. Thank you.